every year managers moan about fixtures mm. and the amount of fixtures they have to play. That's just, you know, part and parcel of being a footballer or a manager, isn't it, or not? Is there too much football? Are we so we've got, at the moment we've got three games over the seven days, right? We've got twenty sixth Boxing Day, either the twenty eighth or twenty ninth, and then New Year's Day. Right? Yeah, that's too much. It, why is it too much, Jack? Because players don't have have time to recover. So normally, now you're thinking twenty sixth, they'd, they'd have a recovery day, twenty seventh. What? Just explain to me. I don't know. What recovery, is recovery day, day would day? be normally whatever you want. Like if you want to get on a bike, you have a massage, you stretch. Okay, how long are you doing that for? How long does a recovery day last? Um, probably a few hours. Okay. And sleep is important as well. You don't. Well, I didn't sleep very well after a game. So then the next day you're catching up on sleep. Do you take caffeine before a game? Yeah, you did take. Is that yeah. quite common? Yeah. All right. And how? What form would you take it? In? Like espresso or a tablet? Or no, what? a tablet. Pro Plus. All right. Okay. Mm. And is that, is that quite common now throughout football? Everyone does that. Yeah. So that, is that one of the reasons why you can't sleep in the evening? And then at half time you'll have like an energy gel with caffeine wow. in it. Yeah, so it's difficult after a game to sleep. Um, yeah, so then the next day would be a recovery day. And even this, the second day, some players as well, don't they? They like mm. second day recovery where you go out, you do a little bit of light training. I was the worst after the second day. Yeah, so second, did I. The day after, I was always like, I'm not so bad that. The second day, whew, that was where... But why is that? You're meant to be... And I'm asking this question, I don't know, but you're meant to be trained athletes. Why would you yeah, need two recovery athletes, days? Still not, not to play every two days. That's mm. ridiculous. Well, the, the argument will always be, we a lot of people want to see elite level football. But when you're, you're trying to add this many games in as well, you're not, you're not going to get that. Obviously, I get it. The, the byproduct of money involved in terms of you want to watch the best teams mm -hmm. playing the biggest tournaments. But they are forgetting about the well-being of the players. And again, you start going further down the period, and I get period pyramid. I get it mm -hmm. because teams, people in the championship, League One, League Two, they're used to this. They do it all the time. I remember when I was in the championship, certainly around this time of year. It felt like you were playing every two, three days, and it's yeah, it's, they don't it's do tough. every two days, do they? Not every two days, but there's periods mm -hmm. where you might play. I don't know. Uh, Saturday, Monday, Friday. Mm. So that's three games so in, in six days. Okay, mm. so what will it do? I'll start with you, Jack. What will it do to someone's performance? Yeah. And if you play on the 26th and then two or even three days later you're playing again, when you get to New Year's Day, if, you're, if your performance levels on Boxing Day were a, a 9 out of 10 for performance, as in, you know, the the energy you've got, what mm. would that come down to? You mean physical to? performance? Yeah. Well, I think you can't repeat that intensity. So, I mean, some players will. Like, some players will be able to do exactly the same. But the majority of players won't be able to get the same number of sprints, the same distance and covered high speed distances. They just won't. They would, some will be taken like they won't have that edge. Also, as well, when you throw in where we are today, obviously the, the sad state of affairs with the COVID. When you then throw that in as well, it's difficult mm. because you're going to be going to be using players where there are players out there that are, listen are very very fit, but simply can't because they've got to carry little injuries. Like for instance, I played with Ledley King. His knees was of bad. Course, yeah. he, he couldn't he, even train. Could he? he couldn't train, but he couldn't play. Saturday, Wednesday, no, not a chance. Mm. But when you start throwing in the COVID situation and where people are going down with positive tests, so then there are players out there that can't physically play it, but because you're losing players left, mm. right, and centre, you have to. You almost have to put them mm. back in there. And do you risk more injury? Absolutely. Well, yeah. And people are going to say, yeah, you, you risk you risk more injury. And people are going to be listening to this and like they always do and say, oh, they get paid hundred grand a week. Yeah. They, they well, you do get shut paid up, grand a week. Shut, shut up, up. You've got you to should play. shut up. <laughs> But they they are going to play. They've got no choice because that's the, the games, the TV there. But they won't get the same level of entertainment. Do, do you think the fan will realise that come the third day, the third game in seven days, we'll be watching it on our screens or we'll be there at the same going? Do you know what? They don't look great. You, you'll get. Would some, I see that? You'll get some that will go. Oof, their levels are a little bit lower. Okay. But again, as you just Jack made a good point there, there are going to be people out there that are saying. Well, what are they moaning about? They're getting paid oh. all this amount of money. Should we speak to someone that may be saying that? Yeah. Let's speak to Luke. He's a Bristol City fan. Hello, Luke. How are you? Hi guys, yeah, all good. Thanks, uh, thanks for letting me on. Uh, pleasure. Great show as always. Thank you, man. Yeah, just, just a couple of bits on the debate. Um, firstly, I mean, yeah, I'm totally disagree with the whole too many fixtures at Christmas. Like Jurgen Klopp was moaning the other day. What was it about? A uh, Wednesday, Sunday, Tuesday. Um, so just going on from that a little bit. Your normal average worker on the street, whether he's a like myself, a firefighter, a butcher, works in a supermarket, a building site. With COVID happening and that sort of thing, there's people doing shifts out of their ears at the minute and they're probably going in and not performing as good as they possibly could because they're doing three shifts in five days, they're doing four shifts in eight days or whatever it is. And they're getting paid an average normal... But that's really got nothing because that's just different professions. Unfortunately, that's just how it is right now. But a player's trying to play at an elite level three times in one week, it's just not possible. It doesn't matter how much money they earn or what profession they're in, 
We talk about football. Okay, okay, Darren. So we're saying the firefight then with lives on the line, and you get called out. You can't you compare. It, you can't compare it. It's madness to compare. Shape. You can't, Luke, you can't... Listen, I'd love to side with you in this debate, right? Because it upsets Jack and Darren if I say, come on, you footballers earn X, Y and Z. But we have to be realistic about it. You can't compare a firefighter or a nurse or a doctor on the front line to a footballer. There's just no point. There's no comparison there at all, Luke. In what sense? Why would there not be a comparison? Well, in, in every... In, in every well, okay, not, I'll, I'll start with the, the, the financial side of it. Football's worth absolute yeah. gazillions. And sadly, yeah. sadly, becoming a doctor or a nurse isn't. Yeah, exactly. But that's my point, in in a sense, is that they're not getting the money, but yet they have to go there and they're expected to perform. I know, but it's yeah, but, yeah, but so are footballers. Are. Footballers are expected to go out there and perform as well. They don't go out there and yeah, think, "Oh, yeah. I'm I'm tired, so I can't perform." They're still expected to go out there and put a level of performance yeah, in. I tell you what, I tell you what, Luke. Right, and I exaggerate a point to prove a point, and it's going to sound silly, but you'll understand why. If there was billions of pounds worth of of TV rights to doctors and nurses, right? And every time a doctor or nurse didn't turn up, it's going to sound silly, but you'll understand what I'm saying, that they would lose millions of pounds in revenue and advertising if that doctor or nurse didn't get to the hospital, right? Let me tell you now, those doctors and nurses, even though they do at the moment, would be working overtime because there's supply there. There's people who want to see them work. And with footballers, that's how it works. If there wasn't money in the game, then there wouldn't be this great call to have so many football matches as often as we do. But you, can't, you yeah, there's no, there's no way you can compare anyone on the front line who do phenomenal jobs, phenomenal work, and should be getting their pay trebled, in my opinion, even quadrupled. But sadly, we can't compare the two. It's, it's apples and oranges. I, I think that's, yeah, I think it's a little bit of a dub sound. I know what you're coming at, and I know what point you're making there and it, with your advertising and your sponsorships and all that sort of thing. But if you knit, take all the nitty-gritty out of it and you put it down to the job they're doing and the standard they've got, they, they're set, the amount of hours they're going to, and yeah, the pay is, you, you, I know you're saying the pay isn't uh, relevant in that case because of what footballers are doing at the elite level, but the point is what their work is compared to the pay they're getting. Yeah, you can't, you can't compare it, Luke. It, it's, it's supply, thank you for your call, you, ca you can't compare. It always comes but, back to money. And, and, and that's yeah. the most, supply that, and demand. That, that's the most frustrating thing, is mm. that it's almost like, because, Listen, footballers' wages are, of course, I get it, crazy. Are, are crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And I, they're not saving lives and all that. I, I fully understand yeah, all that. Doubt. But it's almost like because you earn that amount of money, you're not allowed to feel tired. You should be able to play two or three days. Yeah. Like, it's almost like you've just got to get on with it. Suck yeah, it up and get on with it. can't go down that road. That's no, exactly. Crazy. Not absolutely not. You know, and I get you, it. Other professions, yeah. like the cyclists, I get it. Tennis players, I don't know how they do it. They mm. play, a, a, what, three hours every couple of days when they're yeah. in a, a grand I get all that. But it's just unfortunate that because footballers do get paid an absolute king's ransom, it's almost like, well, they can't have any any kind no, of feelings. I, yeah, we can't. We can't. You can't compare. Listen, no. we, we all agree that people on the front line, they they're worth their, their absolute weight in gold, and they should be, you know, earning similar to what footballers earn. But sadly, that's never going to be possible. No. We don't live in that world. But.